Welcome to GoVM Lab, India's first job-ready VMware learning platform where professionals meet experts to revolutionize their VMware careers. Hello everyone. Welcome to GoVM Lab, VMware vSphere Distributed Switch Advanced Networking Lecture Series. In this lecture, we are going to learn about network I.O. control capability of vSphere Distributed Switch. Now, what is network I.O. control? Network I.O. control is used to allocate network bandwidth to business critical applications and to resolve situations where several type of traffic such as iSCSI traffic, fault tolerance traffic, vMotion traffic, vSend traffic, etc. compete for common resources and that would be our network adapter. So now network IO control help us to enable fine green resource control at the VM network adapter level by defining reservation shares and limits parameter at every adapter level and that's the same model what we have been keep using it for the decades for our cpu and memory resource management so now let's get started with the network io control and let's understand how do we go and enable network io control on our vsphere distributed switch as you could see that we are logged into our vcenter server named as savcsa01.govmlab.local now let's go and browse our data center click here to browse our data center now click here to browse our esxi host sa esxi01 host and that's where we do see that there is a vm called server vm so click on that vm now let's go and browse our sa esxi03 host and we do see that there are a bunch of vms which are running on that host now click on user vm02 that is the vm which is running on our sa esxi01 and click on user vm02 and that is a VM which is also running on our SA ESXi 03 host. Now for this net IOC demonstration, we are going to make use of these three VMs. User VM 01 and 02 is going to be our client VMs and the VM named as server VM which is running on SA ESXi 01 host is going to be our server VM. So we are going to use open source utility called NetPerf for traffic generation and that's a client server based application and that's where server vm is where we would be running net server and user vm01 and user vm02 as you do see that is going to be our net puff client so now click on putty and that's where you do see that we have already created a, a putty sessions for these vms so click on server vm let's run the command if config and you do see that the ip address of our server vm is 172.2010.221 now click on user vm01 which is going to be a client vm run the command if config let's make a note of the ip address and the ip address of our very first client vm is 172.2010.223 now click on user vm02 and user vm02 which is going to be our second client vm for traffic generation and the ip address of this vm is 10.224 now click on that server VM and as we discussed this server VM we are going to run our net server. So that's where let's run the command net server hyphen P 1234. Now what it does we are going to initiate net server on the port 1234. So that's the command what we are going to run it. Press enter key and as you do see that the net server has been successfully started on the port 12. 3, 4. So we have successfully started server on our server VM. Now let's go to user VM 01 and let's run the command netperf hyphen h. We are running netperf as a client on this VM hyphen h and that is the IP of our VM where this net server is running. So that is going to be our net server VM IP because that's where we are running our net server hyphen p stands for the port where the net server is running so we we running we are running this net server on port 1234 that's the port number is the next thing is basically the what kind of traffic we are going to run are we going to run tcp stream udp stream tcp request response or udp request response so we can run different kind of traffic using this netperf utility but for our demonstration we are just using tcp traffic so that's what hyphen t is all about it and then last section what do we have it is l the duration of that traffic how long the traffic would be running so we are doing it for the 600 seconds so now let's press the enter key and as you do see that 
our TCP stream test has been successfully started. Now let's run the same NetPuff client utility on our other VM as well. So let's log into our other client VM and let's run the same command. And if you do see that the command is same, that's our that's our VM IP, that's the port number, and we are also running the same TCP stream for 600 seconds. So now press enter key and we do see that TCP traffic has been successfully started on this client machine as well. And both of these client machine has started talking to our net server VM. So now let's log into our ESXi host where these client machines are running. So let's log into our SA ESXi 03 host. As you could see that we are logged into our SA ESXi 03 host. Run the command ESX stop. Press N key and look at that. What do we see that? It actually gives us network statistics, right? And if you do see that in the megabyte transmitted per second, look at the stats. The stat says that overall traffic, what do we see that is around 1219. It close to 1.2 Gbps traffic and out of which are RHEL 04. So one of our client VM is pumping 767 mega bits of traffic and our other VM is actually pumping 451 megabits of traffic. Now click here and you do see that the stats have got updated and now it got updated to 554. It got updated to 554 and 703 megabits transmitted per second. And overall, if you do the summing of these two stats, that's what the aggregated output would be 1.2 Gbps per second. So that's the, the traffic. What do we see that which is going through across our VMNIC3 adapter. Now click on vSphere client, click on networking. Now what we are going to do now we are going to understand what happens when we go and configure network IO control. Thank you for watching this video. If you want to continue watch this lecture, then join our exclusive YouTube membership program only at the price of 299 rupees INR per month and unlock your VMware potential with GoVM Lab. With this membership program, you can unlock all of our members only content published on our YouTube channel. You can watch out the videos presented on your screen to know the benefits of GoVM Lab subscription as well as the membership program. Thank you.